When we used the multiplication operator with our signal, it scaled the amplitude of each sample by performing a linear gain change. If we use the addition operator with our signal, it's going to perform something called a DC offset. This term comes from the days of analog electric circuits, where it'd be the equivalent of adding direct current to our signal. So when we use addition, what it's going to do is shift the amplitude of each sample in our signal by the same amount. Let's go ahead and look at using MATLAB to perform this DC offset. Here's a demonstration of two different approaches for performing a DC offset. I'm going to reuse some of the code I created previously as part of the linear gain change script. The process and steps that we'll use here will be very similar, with the main difference being, instead of using the multiplication operator to scale the amplitude of our signal, we're going to use the addition operator to perform the offset. So as a refresher, here we've created a sine wave test signal at the beginning of the script. It has a frequency of three hertz, it lasts for one second long, and has a sampling rate of 48,000 samples per second. Before we created a variable called amplitude to scale the amplitude. In this case, let's change the name of this variable so it describes what it's going to do. We'll name it offset, and we can choose whatever value we like here. I'll use 0 0.5. Next, we're going to take this sine wave test signal and go through a loop where we go sample by sample through each element or each sample of our signal and perform some processing on it before we use multiplication times our amplitude value. Another trick that I'll show you here that you can reuse in your own scripts moving forward is instead of hard coding in the number of samples here from one up to 48,001, let's do this. And let's use the function here called length where we actually measure the length of the signal that's the number of samples in the signal. Therefore, if we're going to pass in any kind of signal, it will figure out the total number of samples for us. That way we don't have to look and count up the number of samples. Our code will automatically determine for any sound file now, the correct number of samples to go through in the loop. All right, so here we're still gonna go through, instead of using multiplication, let's use addition and our variable offset. After we're done with the loop, we can plot and compare the input signal against the output signal. So I'll run the script. And here we end up with our two signals. The blue signal is the original unprocessed one, and the red one is the output processed one. Here we've shifted everything up. Each sample gets moved up by 0 0.5. So now the red one is above the blue one. The amplitude is the same for both signals, just the offset has changed. I could switch this to minus 0 0.5 and look at the result. Our blue signal still starts at zero, goes up to one and minus one. Our red signal now starts at minus five, minus 0 0.5, goes up to 0 0.5, and then all the way down to minus 1.5. So this is how you can use the loop to perform it. I'm also gonna show you a similar approach to using arrays. So in this case, we're going to use array addition. Previously, I had this code commented out, so it wasn't doing anything. What I'm going to do is highlight the code, go up here to the menu, and click this button to uncomment the code. You'll see that the comments have now been removed. When I execute the script, it will run. You can also highlight it, comment it, and it will go back to the way that it was before. So that's another trick for when you're just running your code. So I'll uncomment it, and this is going to run now. So this is where we're going to use a scalar number, in this case offset, will make it, how about two? And then we're going to use addition, our input signal, plus the offset. So we can use a number plus the signal and it will perform element-wise addition by default. We can look at then the result. So now, we have moved or shifted up the signal based on our offset by two. Every single sample in our signal has just been moved up. So this is the concept and process of performing the DC offset. It's usually something you want to avoid doing when you're going to be playing back this audio signal because you want your signal to be centered around zero. 
However, there are certain situations that we'll look at in the future when it's absolutely necessary to know how to perform the DC offset.